Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I just want to say a quick thank you to all of the viewers and the subscribers and all the likes and the comments. I really appreciate it. And that is the best way you, that you can show your support right now. So it helps with the algorithms. And, uh, you know, I want to help spread this message to as many people as we can and create a community that thrives on togetherness, peace, and bettering ourselves each and every day. With that being said, the topic for today is summoning the burning desire to be free. And really, what I wanted to talk about is just where I came from in this burning desire to be free as well. And this focusing all of my intentions at one point in my life on being free and what it really meant to me to be free. And I want to start also with a Romans 8, 6 Bible verse. It says, for, the, for to be carnally minded is death, but to the spiritually minded is life and peace. So this is about overcoming our fleshly desires, overcoming our fleshly wants and needs, and trusting that when we put our spirit first, that is where the true magic of life will happen. And there were many times in my life where I wanted to, you know, just sin, basically. I was I was very lustful and I was very gluttonous at one point as well. And I was never really wrathful. In fact, that's actually something that I had to develop over over a course of time and learning how to channel that because I was so conditioned growing up, especially, you know, just in my environment, being around narcissists quite a lot. There was a lot of, there's a lot of times where I wasn't, I was, I was scared to express my anger because whenever I expressed that anger, there was anger 10 times <laughs> that came back at me. And so I just decided to put anger in a little drawer in my mind that was locked shut. And I didn't have the keys to actually open that lock again until about a couple years ago, three years ago. And really when I started to develop some self-respect, and that is really what this Romans 8, 6 verse is about, is developing self-respect and developing self-love. And I don't, I don't think a lot of the times people really understand what self-love is because it's not sugar and spice and all things nice. It's, it's very, it can be very rough sometimes. And for me, especially, I had to learn a lot of things with tough love on myself. And I realized that the way that I talk to myself is not always the same way that I would talk to a lot of different people, mainly because I can be very harsh with myself, but that's what also motivates me and I have to do it in the right way. And so summoning this burning desire to be free really came from wanting to not be anybody else's plaything or toy or being a reference point to troll. That was a long time ago, you know, three or four years ago when I first started to really recognize and reprogram how I thought about things. And the, the calm confidence that I've received from that has a lot to do with my relationship with Jesus, but it also has a lot to do with my relationship with who I am as an individual. Now, in Exodus, when Moses goes to tell the people about God, the message that God says to Moses to send to them is, I am that I am. And I thought a lot about this for quite some time. And I did make another couple videos on it a long time ago, um, about four or five months ago, maybe. But one of the things that most stood out to me in that is that anybody can be 
that message. And that message serves as a kind of subliminal construct of human nature and reality. Because really, that is the most primal thing that anybody can can understand. I mean, imagine being imagine being a one of the first primates, one of the first human beings to walk this earth, and you're not even developing a language yet, but you have a a conscious understanding that you are, that you are living, and that you are somewhere in the world, that you have a have a body of some kind like i can't really imagine what life would have been like without language to some degree now of course there's like body language and everything like that that we've learned across millions of years but imagine what it would have been like to be one of those first human beings that were just developing new languages and <coughs> excuse me it just it's just amazing to me to think about and just to think how far we've come as a civilization and how our ancestors fought saber-toothed tigers they fought elephants or well maybe not elephants but like uh what are they called mammoths yeah that's mammoths they fought mammoths and all these different other kinds of animals and tigers and lions and everything that could have been a threat to them jaguars they all fought so that you could be here right now watching this video if that isn't motivation enough to get your freaking life together i really don't know what is and so thinking about the cosmic scale of existence can put your spirit more in line with where you are on your path and letting go of fleshly desires that or pushing yourself to physical limits i think that's another thing we maybe don't do enough as a civilization is that we don't push ourselves enough because we want to have that soft cozy comfortable stationary feeling because it's as uh, one of the previous comments in my last video said it's false security and it's false selfness or safeness which is i think more dangerous than any kind of risk but all of life is risk this is another thing i don't think we quite understand is that all of life is risk you sitting here watching this video instead of doing something else you're listening to this message. That's a risk. And it's risking your time. You eating eating more healthy foods and avoiding like brownies and sugar and ice cream and all that fun stuff. <laughs> it's it's not the same. It's a risk to do that because you're risking your you're risking one desire for the other. And I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't desire things and you should only desire to be free. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that it's more important and more valuable to value freedom and to value being better than it is to value being safe and being secure. Risk comes with freedom. Responsibility comes with freedom. But what does safety and security come with? Complacency. Yeah, you may have everything taken care of, care of for you, but you're going to be an incompetent imbecile that has no idea how to grow in their life. And what a sad... Like, that's not what our ancestors stood for. That's not what they died for. This is, this is our life.